After we finished cleaning up all the demo in the dining room, we insulated the walls in here. And the next weekend, my parents actually came over and my little brother and they helped us hang drywall, which was no easy task. So there's not very many clips just because we were hanging 12 foot drywall and my family doesn't really like to be on camera. So I'm going to respect that and not put them on camera. So that's why I didn't get very many clips. But this is how the dining room looks right now. We have two coats of mud on it and it currently needs to be sanded. We are making so much progress in here and it seems to be going by super fast just because it's not as hard as the kitchen. There's not really much to think about layout wise or do any plumbing or anything like that. But the fireplace is going to be left exposed like this. If you can tell on the drywall, we tried so hard to keep a clean, fresh, like straight edge just so that we wouldn't have to gum it up with trim or quarter round or anything like that. So we did keep it as straight as possible. The fireplace is honestly one of the things that need the most work and especially this pad in front of the floor. I really have no idea how I'm going to fix this. I don't ever know how I'm going to approach a project until I do the research and come time to fix it. So I have not even done any research on this yet. So I will have to do that before I can actually work on it. But as you can see, this fire surround is really rusted. So we will have to grind that down and we will refinish that. But let me know if you know anything about the pad and what I can do to fix that or if I just have to replace it or what needs done but I will have to go back and finish taking off the rest of this plaster and we're actually not going to be sanding down the brick anymore. I'm just going to be taking as much of this plaster off as possible, but I actually really like the worn look of the brick. I don't want it to look like fresh, perfect brick, so I'm going to leave it as is like that. If you have followed along from the very beginning, I originally said that my plan was to tear out this closet, but we've since decided to not tear it out just because it does have two load bearing studs in here. So those have to be left and we didn't want to build a header or anything like that. So we are going to leave this closet and it is original to the house. So I do like that, but we have found that we need a little bit more storage space in the house. So I am going to be leaving this and I think we're going to use it as a closet where we store just our tablecloths, extra dining room supplies what that we may need. And then also probably some extra quilts. This plaster in the closet, it's on the brick, so we did leave it just because it's incredibly hard to get off. You have to take a grinder to the brick and it has to be a special type so that it doesn't destroy the brick. So we did just mud over that. They call it marine plaster and drywall together. So that's what we did. This closet door, I will have to take down and peel the paint off of the white side. And then I would love if I could try and match the stain up with this original color that is on here and see if I can get all the colors to match in here. But I'm not sure if I can just because the stain is completely different nowadays, but I think I could get it pretty close. And the hardware on this door, it's called Eastlake and it's on all the knobs in the house. So one of the doors that is already broke in the house, I will be taking a doorknob off of one of the broke doors and putting it on this one, just because we do have so many doors in this house that are broke and are not usable now. I cleaned up one of the windows in here in the dining room and as you can see it cleaned up and looks super nice but eventually we would like to get some new wood windows in here but that's just not in the budget right now so we are going to be sticking with these for now but I did get them cleaned well enough that they do lock now they just need to be cleaned again because of course dust has fallen since we've been working in here but at least they lock now and that is what is important. We are leaving this window unit in here in this window just because it does heat as well as air. So we used it in the summertime, but we also are using it now in the wintertime. But hopefully once we get our wood stove going inside, then we can take it out. I think I am most excited about this wall with the electrical panel. If you've seen in my previous videos, this wall was cut all to pieces and we did have to do a little bit of restructuring on this wall just because they had previously put in a wall heater years ago. I'm not sure when but they took out the stud to put in the heater. So we had to re-brace a couple of the studs because they also cut out one of the studs whenever they put in the electrical panel. So this wall needed a lot of work, but we got that fixed and now it is structurally sound. After we get the wall sanded, then we should be able to rent a floor sander and get these floors sanded, but we will have to pick our corn first. We still have not picked our corn. We've been waiting on it to get a little bit drier, so we will have to take a break from renovations to do that for a little bit, but it should be quick. In this room previously, they did have carpet on the main part of the room and then on the walking path through the to the kitchen, they did have linoleum. 
so we will have to work to try and get that glue up i'm hoping i can get it up pretty easily but you never know with older stuff usually it's pretty hard to get off and i always get a lot of questions on this pipe that is in the dining room and this is actually our sewer so this will be left we do currently use this but we just ran all new plumbing that connects to this if that makes sense but we did not replace the main line so this runs directly into our septic tank and i of course will be cleaning it up i will not take a grinder to it but whatever i use to repaint and refinish our cast iron fireplace surround i will be using this on our cast iron pipe here also as I've mentioned before, we are trying to make sure that we fix everything as we go in this house and make sure that there's no underlying issues, but also we're trying to make sure that it is safe just because a lot of the modern things it doesn't have, and one of those was a fire block. So we did install a 5 8 drywall that is has a fire guard on it. So it was a little bit more pricey, but we did decide to go with that, and as you can see, we started hanging it on the ceiling and we still have to get more and finish the rest, but we're actually not going to be taping and mudding the drywall that we put on the ceiling just because that's not what we want. That is just being installed as a fire block. And over top of the drywall that we put on the ceiling, we will be hanging beadboard over top of that. And that is what you will see. Hopefully that answered some of your guys' questions. I got a lot of those questions on my YouTube video and over on my Instagram. So hopefully now there's not so much confusion, but our next steps will be to finish hanging the drywall on the ceiling, sand it, and then probably sand the floors and maybe clean up the brick just a little bit more. Once we get finished with hanging the drywall and especially on the ceiling, then hopefully it'll be back to just me and Ben, but we never turn away help. And if they don't wanna be on camera, I just don't film. But once it's just back to me and Ben, then I'll start filming more and get more of the progress that we are doing here in the dining room. But thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys will like and subscribe.